Maryville Academy, begun in 1883 to serve children who had no homes, beginning as an orphanage, evolving today, 127 years later, still all about children. The evolution of how we carry out the mission has changed to meet today's needs for children. We serve children in three different ways. One is reaching out to families in their times of crisis, trying to help them through that emergency experience so that their family can stay together as a healthier and stronger family. Two, offering safe havens and homes for children who cannot live safely at home. These safe havens, these homes, are places for our children to feel loved, appreciated, and have opportunities to grow and develop so that they can be contributing members of our society in the future. And three, a psychiatric hospital dedicated to children, adolescents, and young adults, helping heal them in their difficult times so that they too can succeed as contributing members of our society. Because we believe that families are the most important resources for children, our programs focus on building stronger families and keeping families together whenever possible. We all need a helping hand and when we have little ones it's an awful lot of work and so sometimes when you don't have those other support systems or they're not available, the crisis nursery is available to them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He gets great care here. They understand, they're very empathetic to my situation. Most of us are moms and we think of the kids as children first. They're not the patient second. Yes, they need our care as far as nursing and stuff, but they also need nurturing. What we do there at Mind Shelter, we provide emergency services for uh, pregnant parenting teen moms and older adolescent girls. Generally, the ages are anywhere from 14 through 20. Sometimes young ladies may just be pregnant or they may have one or two kids with them. While children and adolescents live at Maryville, a team of highly trained professionals works with them and their families with the goal of restoring family life whenever possible. Whatever approach they have, they, they, got, the, they got the right idea because my daughter came out of Maryville a lot, a lot stronger of a person. Basically, our philosophy is choice-based, uh, very family-focused philosophy. Uh, we believe that the girls and the families need to make mistakes and choices in order to learn from them. Children and adolescents who are unable to return to their homes are prepared for long-term residential care, transitional living, foster care, or independent living. These programs are for mentally ill, intellectually disabled teenagers who have histories of multiple trauma. Things like physical abuse, um, sexual abuse, uh, neglect, they may be aggressive, they have trouble following the rules. Many of them are years behind in school. And what you have to realize is we're attempting to reverse years and years of trauma. Casa Salama stands for House of Safety. And that title, that name was chosen very, very specifically because our, our first and foremost task is to help them feel safe. The trauma theory, the trauma treatment theory is real clear. Only by communicating that you're safe can you even hear anything else. At the Maryville Scott Nolan Center, we work with children, families, and young adults who have complex mental health needs. Here at Scott Nolan in the hospital setting, we're licensed 180 beds. We are currently in the process of opening two additional units in order to assist the community in providing care for the children that need our help. They have issues either with families or trauma that they've experienced at obviously very young ages. I think what's unique about Maryville actually is the continuum of care. We're in the Scott Nolan Outpatient Clinic. Um, I'm a clinical therapist work with a lot of bilingual families. It's mostly helping the, the parents find strategies that they can use at home to help with their children. And I think that once you're able to build that rapport, not only with the families, but with your client, with the little kids too, I think that that's when you really truly see um, the changes happening. They do have a chance. 
It's not that you can't, it's not that you don't have challenges to overcome and we try to tell our kids all the time, the amount of mistakes that you've made and poor decisions you've made, if you look at a normal individual between the ages of 12 and 21 versus the amount of mistakes and challenges most people do between 12 and 40, they've gone ahead and taken about 80% of the normal ones and lumped it into this time. Meaning nothing other than if we look at it right and we approach it from the right way, they've got 80% more experiences to learn from than other people do and trying to reframe that idea of yeah, just because you're in this place and just because those things have happened um, we tell them all the time today's the first day of the rest of your life it's all about you so what are you going to do about it i guess it's it's a job that's difficult i would be denying if it isn't but it's also one that's hopeful we uh in many cases can take young people who are facing institutionalization for the rest of their lives or prison and get them to the point where they graduate from high school, are starting to build job skills, and can be productive members of the community. The states and the government money is, as everyone knows and reads about every day, drying up. But these are children, so they have no funds of their own. They have no way to go out and get a job to fund their own health care. We need to help them. The mission of Maryville Academy is carried out through our generous donors, our committed volunteers, and our dedicated staff. Each of them makes it possible to rebuild lives, rekindle spirits, and renew hope for our children.